Well, hey, welcome back, Seven Days to Die modding fans. This is Zip. And today in video number five, I want to go ahead and cover the animation controller in Unity and blend trees, which is what is used to move these zombies with root motion. So uh, referring back to our um, test female here uh, scene, and this is uh, when you're done, this is the way it should look like. And uh, the textures are not the greatest, but uh, at the end of the last video, I actually put the wrong materials from another zombie onto it. So it kind of looked a little crazy, uh, but easy enough to fix. Basically, you go down to the particular components and just make sure that on like the body, you actually have the body texture and so on and so forth. In this case, I only use the albedo and the normal map. Um, it actually has a gloss texture, which we really don't use in Unity. Um, it looks decent with just those two and makes it much smaller. So um, uh, we'll probably, uh, in some other video, someone will cover texturing these things. But for now, that works out fine. So that's the finished product here. And uh, but getting back to the controller, we go back to the animator tab here. It basically is this rat's nest on three different layers. On this first layer, you have all of the walk types here. Walk type 7, 1, 4, 2, no particular order and no particular naming convention. And then um, different um, states in here of related to movement, like lowering down to the kneeing position, idling on their knees, being on the knees with chest pain, um, the sleeper poses, all in this area here, which is all of your movement. Down here, we starts out with we have death and all these different types of death that they de die when walking to a head hit from the left and blah 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 we're generally not going to mess with these um, we will mess with one of these right in a minute and uh, but I want to show you the others there's also an override layer and on this layer here you have your attacks as well okay this is a melee moving forward B and a melee moving forward a attack two different different attack types and those are selected by these lines here, and in this case, if the game passes an attack trigger and the attack number is equal to two, and the walk type is not equal to four, and the walk type, type is less than eight, it'll do this one. You see, it can get a little bit ugly in there, but it's important to know that the, the TFP uses walk types to drive the path through a lot of these, which is why, when I talk about why I selected a walk type, uh, later it, it becomes important. This one here, as you notice, this one had the same attack trigger, but it's attack equals one and then the same parameters. If you're dealing with the behemoth here, you see the behemoth has an attack trigger, but attack equals one or two depending, but it also, the behemoth has walk type nine. So it won't let it do any of these other animations. If the walk type is nine, it'll force it down the path to the, the behemoth's two attacks. So that's that layer. Finally, full body override these are some additional attacks that um, happen when the character is um, either not moving uh, or it has the vomit reaction like the cop uh, things, the zombie bite, and then all of your pain animations here, like pain while running in the right arm, type A, um, chest, head, so on. So when the characters, you hit them and they, they react to pain differently, they spin around, they uh, um, hold their arm, it all happening in here and again with certain triggers like this pain idling arm here again you hit a hit body part equals three each of the body parts have a name uh, its movement stays equals zero so it's not moving because it was an I remember it was pain idling um, is dead nope um, no sense giving it pain if it's dead walk type is not equal to four and I think four is a crawler and walk types not equal to eight I can't remember what that one is um, but anyways that's how it drives that. So that's how the controller basically works. Um, what I want to focus on today is movement. So the critical thing about movement and going back to the base layer is of each of the walk types here, walk type seven is the most humanoid and it's called locomotion type seven. That's the one that I've been, I've chosen to modify for human characters, uh, bandits and things like that, because I can reuse all of the pain animations. They're very close to what a general, uh, you know, on a live person would do. Uh, whereas some of these other ones are not. Now, if you're doing a brute, you could pretty much get away with walk type one, which is the fat guy walk and modify that chain. Um, but 
uh, it's important to stick with one because in XML, you have to say what walk type it is. So I could do all the changes to walk type 7, and in XML, say it's this character uses walk type 1, and it will never path through these new animations that I, I would do in this one. So hopefully that's clear. So let's take a look at this. On, when I double click on that, um, it opens up this thing called a blend tree. Now you notice it went from base layer down to a sub layer. So I'm looking inside of that state now into basically a child state, another state uh, machine area. Um, it, it has on it tag move because it's a movement type animation. I'm not sure that that is really critical for our purposes, but again, keeping standards, it's good to have that on if you make your own new blend tree. Um, speed is set to one, which means it's going to happen in real time. Uh, the rest of these just leave all, all of default. But on here on the blend tree, what I want to show you is um, you could put any character you want in the window here. I'm going to just drag this one down. It's the same one here because I want you to see how this works. All right. There's a character. So if I'm on this blend tree, you notice this blend tree has a few features to it. Um, it has a strafe parameter that you can move. You can change this value here and a forward one. Now, for some reason in A18, and this wasn't the case before, but in A18 on, on zombie characters and humanoids, they don't use strafe anymore. Uh, we wrote some code, tried to read what was being passed to the animator, and it seems to always be zero. Now, animals still pass a strafe value, and uh, maybe we'll cover animals in another uh, thing. But for all intents and purposes, we're only concerned with forward right now, because strafe will always be zero. How this is related to over here, well, um, you notice that we have four animations connected to the blend tree in the order of idle, walk forward, run forward, and also run forward. Now, the reason why there's four here is in the game we have idle, walk, run, and sprint. And there's no separate sprint a animations. These basically looks like they just speed up the run, so we're leaving that one in there now. Now, how do we, uh, the game passes values to this animator, um, a, a value um, based on what you set XML. It is kind of an art, not a science. Um, we have some code to show you what they're doing. So if, they, if your creature's walking in the game, um, we can read what the value's being passed to the animator and then come in here and adjust these values as necessary. But these are good starting values. So I'm gonna click play on this guy here and you see he's idling, right? It, value is zero and it says um, when uh, position X is strafe, ignore that. Position Y is forward. You know, so we have parameters strafe and forward, and that's X and Y. So under it's zero. So when we pass a zero, it should be idle. Now, when we approach a value of 0 0.03, it will begin to start to walk and walk at 0 0.03, fully walk without the influence of idle or run. Okay? So I'm going to slide this to 0 0.03, or just type in 0 0.03. And there's this guy walking here. That is using the walk forward A walk. You could, again, put any um, animation you want in there. Uh, but that's the one that comes with the game. So here he's walking. If we move up to point three, he'll start running. And again, point six shouldn't show us any different. But the game will actually propel him forward faster. Okay. And now if we move that slider, just gradually, it's a nice smooth transition from walk to run. The game does it better than my unstudy hand does, but that's how a blend tree works. Now down here you have a couple of things, just time scale. You don't need to ever touch that. It will always be time scale one. That's the third column. Um, Compute positions, I'm not going to cover that. It's really weirdness. You notice if I go ahead and, and if I change any of these, it's going to do strange stuff. What that's doing is it's reading the animations and trying to figure out what those numbers would be. Um, but it, it's generally wrong, sometimes a little wrong, sometimes um, really badly wrong. So I'm going to press Control Z, that famous key, and put it back to where it was because I didn't like that change. But there we go. So I'm going to pause this here and slide this back. And that's essentially how blend trees work. Uh, for purposes of what you're doing now, you should never need to do anything but come into here and say, all right, well, I want this guy to walk a little differently, right? So all you would do is 
when you're in this position, you click this little round button, and this window pops up over here. I want to make sure it's in the camera. Right? And you see we have all these different um, different walks. So if we said, well, we want it to be really, when he walks, we want him to walk like the fat guy, even though he idles like a skinny guy. Well, you just click that, and that will put that into there. Now when you play it, you'll notice if I pull this forward, his walk is a little point zero. Point zero three, and that's the fat walk, right? So now we've just simply changed it. So if you get a character and it comes with its own walk animations and they're really cool, uh, sexy cat walk or whatever, you could pop that in there and on again locomotion type seven in XML call locomotion type seven and your character will do sexy cat walks. All right, that's pretty much how that works. Um, I should control Z and put that back in case I ever have to do this one again. And uh, that's pretty much it. Now, one other thing I just want to cover. You could change this from 2D freeform directional. That means it's moving both in the strafing and the forward direction. But for all practical purposes, you can use 1D on that. And then you would just need to put those values back into there, uh, and change the parameter from strafe just to use forward. And then the character would go ahead and, uh, and use that. Let me pause this and then drag the character back and it's doing something really silly I'm not sure why it's doing that what have I got wrong oh okay I need zero this one would be point zero three and it gets kind of weird when it does this now I don't know why it jumps like that I never quite figured that one out Well, anyways, once you get these numbers numbers right, I guess you have to work from this direction here. And I'm just gonna go put some numbers in here. And okay, rough numbers, but now it's gonna work. And you could do that in 1D. I've been starting to use this since, um, unless we can figure out why strafe data isn't being um, put in. I think it's because when they went to the grid system, it just walks the grid and, and doesn't leave the grid. There's no real good reason to strafe. Or it could be because they use character controllers and we can't. Um, but it looks pretty good the way it is. So these are compromises that we've had to make to get things into the vanilla game. So that will cover that. Um, I think that's pretty much it for movement uh, blend trees and using the animation controller. I do want to show one quick tip today that uh, um, uh, Guppy uh, pointed out is that you can actually, when you were trying to compare this standard nurse uh, rig to this rig here, you know, I was having you to go up and down. Well, he basically showed me how you can go ahead and click on this little button here and you could add a tab and add a second hierarchy and then simply move this hierarchy over here, right? And then move this down and you can have your test zombie here. And if you hold the uh, alternate key down on, um, on a location in the chain and then click the left mouse button, it'll expand it all the way open. And that way it'll make it easier for you to compare what the, the template is to this. So thanks Guppy for that tip. Uh, should come in very handy, and, and uh, I look forward to talking to you at the next uh, video.